Earlier today, we got two groundbreaking pieces of NBA news almost simultaneously, so instead of breaking them up and discussing them individually, I figured I would make one video discussing both of them, because in a way they do actually somewhat relate to each other, and can be looked at under the same microscope because of the vague similarities between the situations. The two moves that were made, of course, are that the Atlanta Hawks traded Cam Reddish to the New York Knicks, and that the reported Bull Bull trade that was supposedly agreed upon and finalized actually ended up being voided today, so Bull will no longer be headed to the Detroit Pistons. At the trade deadline, as it approaches, we should continue to see more and more deals start to come about, and these trades might prove to be the starting point with the floodgates opening. But for now, we have two young players who were in somewhat similar situations with plenty to analyze about their futures while also dealing with some complications along the way. Before we start though, I want to thank Prize Picks for sponsoring this video. Prize Picks is the perfect service for all of us basketball fans here because when you're involved, it makes watching games every night so much more fun and engaging. Basically, it's an application that provides you with lines on all kinds of individual player props, such as points, rebounds, and assists, and you simply have to choose whether you believe they will record over the set amount in the line or under the set amount in the line. Make your selections, wager however much you want to, and if your picks hit, you can win some big money. For some picks I'm looking at making for tonight's games, I'm thinking of going with Clay Thompson to score over 13.5 points, Anthony Edwards to score over 20.5 points, and Desmond Bain to score over 17 and a half points. If this sounds at all intriguing to you, then go use the link in the description of this video to sign up today and use promo code REFERENCE to receive a 100% deposit match bonus up to $100. Once again, thank you to PrizePix for sponsoring this video, now let's get back into the topic at hand. We'll start with the news on the Bull Bull front because it is actually really shocking that this trade got called off after all of the handshakes were done and agreements were made. Bull Bull has been one of the most tantalizing prospects in the NBA over the last few years for no other reason than the fact that he has a skill set that we really haven't seen before, being someone who stands at 7'3", who not only relies heavily on the three-point shot on offense, but is also comfortable handling the ball and taking defenders off the dribble at that side. In theory, this sounds incredible, but in reality, it's not as perfect as it seems. Bull Bull dominated the college game as a freshman at Oregon, putting up video game-esque numbers, but after just nine games that year, he suffered a foot injury that held him out of the regular season. This, along with a few other things that I'll mention soon, resulted in him going from being a lottery pick in the draft like he was projected to be early on, all the way to slipping into the second round when the draft actually happened. Health and injury concerns for a player this size, especially for someone who also happens to be pretty skinny, can be worrisome for NBA teams, so there always tends to be caution around big men that show signs of health issues early on. Since Bull Bull has gotten to the NBA though, there really haven't been in any more injury flare-ups, as he did well rehabbing in the G League as a rookie, and since then, he's stayed relatively healthy, all things considered, over the last few years. At least, that's what we were led to believe before today's report came out. See, the reason why Bull Bull is no longer being traded to the Detroit Pistons is because when he went in for his physical with the Pistons medical staff, they found the issues that scared them away regarding his injuries and health. And now that he's back on the Nuggets, he'll likely continue to ride the bench, which is just unfortunate all around. According to league sources in the know about the situation, the Nuggets were reportedly shocked that this happened, but at the same time, it very well might be a little glimpse into the reality of the situation that the general public hasn't had access to. See, as fans, we've all been begging for Bull Bull to be given a real shot as a player for an extended period of time, but the most we've seen from him is a handful of runs in garbage time of games, and a game here and there where he'll be given a few minutes off the bench but nothing crazy. Now that we know that there are still lingering injury concerns about his foot, more questions open up pointed towards him. 
Along with his injury that I mentioned at the start, the other things that made NBA teams worrisome about drafting him is that there were questions about his love for the game and his work ethic. Did Bull Bull not rehab as well as was needed? Did he put in the work in practice to actually earn a spot in the team's rotation? Does he have an attitude that might be detrimental to his own success? These questions may all seem too derogatory, but now that this has gone down, you can't help but think about them in the back of your head. We may not have all the answers for this situation, but now we have at least a little more context provided on why Bull Bull is in the situation that he's in, and we will continue to monitor it moving forward. Now moving on to the other big piece of news that broke today, Cam Reddish got traded from the Hawks to the New York Knicks in a deal that should give him a bigger role on a team that can realistically commit more long-term to him. According to ESPN, the details of this trade include Reddish, Solomon Hill, and a second round pick being traded to the Knicks in exchange for a protected 2022 first round pick and forward Kevin Knox. Reddish, like Bull Bull, is a player who has built up a reputation as someone with incredible potential, only unlike Bull, he's been given way more opportunities to grow and develop on the court. It wasn't always sunshine and rainbows for him, as the first two seasons of his career saw some horrendous struggles with efficiency and consistency, not really shooting the ball well at all. But even through all of that, there were always glimmers of hope in his play that showed that down the line, if it started to click, he could be a force in this league. His play style is so silky smooth, with the ball in his hands, he has beautiful shooting form, and when he heats up, there are very few things that can slow him down. On the Hawks, he's always had a ton of competition for playing time at the wing positions, as Bogdan Bogdanovich, Kevin Herter, and DeAndre Hunter have all been much more ready to contribute in the present, and while Reddish could have potentially played some minutes at the four, there's guys like John Collins and Danilo Gallinari taking minutes there as well, so there's never really any time for the Hawks to experiment. Reddish has shown flashes of the kind of player that can create offense at a high level, it's just been really up and down. And going to a team like the Knicks, who actually have a need for wing players, should prove to be a tremendous fit, especially considering he's now going to be playing with his good friend and college teammate RJ Barrett. The Knicks are such a guard-heavy team that they oftentimes play their guards out of position just to give them all playing time, so to bring in Reddish, who is naturally a wing player, will balance out their lineup, give them another dimension to work through on offense, and offer Reddish a legitimate path to consistency with a more defined role. After three years in Atlanta with fluctuating minutes, and a more reserved role having to play alongside such a high usage player as Trey Young is. Of course, Reddish does still have a long way to go to get to where people expect him to be, as he is only averaging about 12 points per game and shooting just 40% from the field. But in New York, there's a much better chance of him getting there where the opportunity is much more set in stone. If anything, the price tag for acquiring Reddish seems ridiculously low based on his potential because Kevin Knox is not a player that has been deserving of legitimate minutes in a rotation at all, and the protection on that first round pick that the Knicks sent out could make the value even better, making you scratch your head a bit on why the Hawks would even agree to something like this. But now, with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about both the Bull Bull situation and the Cam Reddish situation. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.